Coming up next on Jewish Voice, award-winning filmmaker Bill McKay talks about supernatural events detailed in his movie, Against All Odds, Israel Survives. And every Jordanian soldier to a man said that when they got up for the kill, they saw Father Abraham. He lifted his hands, and in Arabic, he commanded them to throw down their weapons and surrender. Goodness. Now there's a miracle. Shalom and welcome to this edition of Jewish Voice. I'm your host, Jonathan Burnus. Israel's first prime minister, David Ben-Gurion, once said, to live in Israel without believing in miracles is not even practical. He witnessed firsthand the miraculous rebirth of the scattered nation after almost 2,000 years. On today's program, we're going to explore the many divine events that have caused Israel to not only survive, but also thrive in the midst of countless efforts to destroy this tiny nation. Filmmaker Bill McKay will be here to share about an outstanding documentary that he's produced called Against All Odds, Israel Survives. Then, later in the program, I'm going to be continuing my teaching on the power of confessing the Hebrew Scriptures. Confession of Scriptures is an important discipline for building our faith and now there's a way to incorporate the original Hebrew text without actually knowing Hebrew. I'm going to teach you how to do this on today's program. But right now I want to show you a powerful testimony from our recent Jewish Voice medical outreach in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The Lord moved in such a powerful way during our outreach to the Jewish community there. Thousands received medical care, dental care, eye care, and free medicines, but even more exciting were the hundreds saved and touched by the power of God. Here's one very special story. Jewish Voice was the instrument that God used to bring me to Ethiopia. We have had a now a little more than a five-year history with uh, Jewish Voice Ministries International, uh, going to places like Gundar and uh, I, uh, here in the Kachini where we are now in, in Addis Ababa and uh, we have trained up many many Ethiopians so that in the, the campaign that we're at now uh, we have fortunately one dentist here from the states but I have seven Ethiopians that have been trained to do some basic dentistry and uh, so we are seeing hundreds of dental patients uh, the dental picture here has changed very much from the first couple of trips that we had where we did almost all extractions now this is already the sixth time that i think we've been here in uh, kacheni now when the people come they want to have fillings they want to have their teeth clean and of course some still need to have some extractions but we have seen at least the level of dentistry begin to get better one young man came for an x-ray or at least he was referred to me for an x-ray and I looked in his mouth and I'll tell you, I wish I had a nice set of teeth like he has. And I says, well, why are you here? And he says, well, they want to, want to have an x-ray over here. And he said, uh, but I really want to know about your God. And he has been obviously in contact with the clinic here and people here. And uh, I said, uh, you want to know about our Jesus? And he says, yes. And so I had an opportunity to witness to him, to share the love of Jesus Christ with him. And praise God, after just a few minutes, you know, he really opened his heart to the Lord. We prayed and he received Jesus into his heart. And that's what this is all about. You can help us change lives. Lives of the very people you just witnessed in this video. Uh, perhaps the Lord speaking to your heart about volunteering on one of our upcoming outreaches to the Jews of Ethiopia or India, well, you can make a difference. So I'm asking you to please contact us today. 
We have several wonderful Jewish Voice outreaches that are coming up in the months ahead, and I'd love to have you experience the joy of sharing God's love with these precious Jewish people. Well, you often hear uh, people describing amazing things that happen in life as being of biblical proportions. Well, nothing could be truer about the rebirth, the survival, and the growth of the state of Israel. God himself has protected, nurtured, and prospered the Jewish people in the midst of hatred and opposition all around them. My guest today, Bill McKay, has produced what I believe is a landmark documentary on this miracle of preservation and survival called Against All Odds, Israel Survives. Please welcome Mr. Bill McKay. Hey, Bill. Bill McKay's interview was fascinating as he shared stories of supernatural interventions during Israel's military campaigns, along with educated observations on the current Middle East situation. The discussion was too long for this 30-minute program, but you're invited to view it in its entirety on Jewish Voices' website. Now let's join the interview as Bill explains how he developed the concept for his movie, Against All Odds, Israel Survives. I got to know many of the leading generals of Israel and the living prime ministers, and uh, uh, I was sitting with one of the five-star generals in uh, Israel one night, and after he had a couple of beers, uh, he was loosened up a little bit, and um, he said, Good you know... Good strategy I'm, for getting an interview, <laughs> for a real interview, the truth. <laughs> and it was off the record at the time. Uh, but he said, um, you know, I'm an atheist. He said, I don't believe in God. He said, in fact, my Messiah is an M16. That's what I believe in. But he said, during the Six-Day War for Jerusalem, and he said, I'm a general. He said, I know victory, I know defeat. And he said, I was on the battlefield one day with men under my command. And he said, not only did I know as the commanding general that we were going to lose that battle, but he said, I knew the war had tipped in the other direction and that Israel would likely be wiped off the face of the earth. So how did he explain that didn't happen, obviously? He said a supernatural phenomenon took place on the battlefield. So he, he attributed to supernatural yeah. uh, uh, intervention, but without changing his he, Well, he views. couldn't quantify it. He said, in fact, I have never even gone public with the story. He said, I've never even told my wife the story. He said, I don't know what to do with it. I want to give it to you. And uh, uh, I received the story, and within about an 18-month period, I had probably a hundred successive meetings just like that particular one, literally orchestrated, I think, by the hand of God. And one of the stories that I had heard about when I was gathering all of my research was the story of David Yaniv. And David, uh, at the time, I did not know his name, but I had heard the story of a young commander with nine Israeli soldiers that had been given orders to find a back route for the tanks to go up in the Six-Day War in 1967 uh, to retake Jerusalem from the Jordanians. And just outside Jerusalem is a little area, which you've been to probably a hundred times, French Hill. Mm -hmm. And on French Hill, uh, these soldiers had dug in because they saw what was hundreds of Jordanian soldiers moving in a patrol uh, in their direction. And as the, as the Jordanians approached, much like the American Indians, they would get themselves worked up into a lather, like a war chant. And when they unleashed their waves of, of men coming at them, they got within about 75 feet of these young Israelis. And they're expecting death and mayhem and blood and violence. And all of a sudden, they throw their weapons down, the Jordanians. And they cry out, Abraham, Abraham. And the Israelis are in a state of paralysis because they're expecting, you know, a bayonet. They're expecting bullets flying at them. And all of a sudden, there are hundreds of guns thrown at their feet. And finally, they stir themselves out of their paralysis long enough to realize that the enemy is surrendering to them. And so they capture these... To these, the nine, hundreds, hundreds surrendering to the nine. Yeah, the ratio was, was, was they were outgunned. And they captured them, turned them over to the Israeli intelligence. And as the protocols required by the IDF, they separate all the, uh, the enemy combatants and they debrief them. 
And every Jordanian soldier to a man said that when they got up for the kill, they saw Father Abraham. He lifted his hands, and in Arabic, he commanded them to throw down their weapons and surrender. My goodness. Now there's a miracle. Talk about 1967. Uh, why, prophetically, is the 67 war so significant? Well, I think it not only changed uh, the geography of Israel dramatically, but I think it changed the spiritual geography of the world. Uh, Jerusalem has been a downtrodden city for, uh, up till that point, almost uh, 2,000 years, since General Titus sacked Jerusalem in AD 70. And I think the, the moment came when the Spirit said, this is the time, I will unite the Jewish people in their land with their capital again. And I think had that not happened, we would not see some of the events that are beginning to unfold today. And I think that the entire mission now of the world as the proxies for, for Lucifer are to divide that city again. And that is the battle line. I'm gonna ask you a question our, many of our audience already know, but for those that are watching by television, this issue of why should Christians be so supportive of Israel? How do we deal even handedly with the Palestinians? Uh, we get a lot of letters asking that. Why, why shouldn't there be a Palestinian state? Comment on that a little bit. Why is it important for Christians to stand with Israel? And are we saying that God is preferring one people over another when we are against a Palestinian state? No, and, and I, as a, a, a Christian and a, and a deeply committed believer, I have no doubt in my mind that, that the Lord of hosts loves the Palestinians as much as he loves the Jewish people. Uh, God is no respecter of persons, and that's plural. Uh, you know, so uh, you start with that as the predicate, but as one who has spent thousands of hours in the West Bank and Gaza, and I know the enemies of Israel. I've been in the homes of the terrorists. I've been in the homes of the leadership of the PLO. I've been there face to face, Jonathan. I know these people. They will never, never, never accept a two-state solution. This is a myth that has been uh, innocently and sweetly perpetuated by the Western cultures. Uh, you know, in our naivete. And we bought into it completely. We bought into it. And, and it's on the theory that a half a loaf is better than no loaf. That's the Western mind. But in the Arab culture, it's one loaf. It's one state. And they have no intent on dividing uh, Jerusalem. They have no intent in dividing that country. This is why. So, if there was a Palestinian state alongside of Israel, it would just be a strategy to eventually. It's an absolute get the whole staging loaf. ground. Yeah. So, why is why should Christians be concerned about Israel standing with Israel? Well, in simple terms, Israel is alone. The entire world has made the decision that a final solution has to happen. And I think unless the Christians who know and love the Lord are willing to put their lives on the line for Israel, then no one else will. And we are the ones that are called by the Holy One to comfort His people. As I said to you in the green room, Isaiah was not speaking to the Jews to comfort the people of Israel. He was not speaking to those that were torturing the Jews in the 17th centuries of diaspora. He was not talking to the secular humanist. He was talking to the Bible-believing Christians in Europe, in Asia, and in America. We are the only ones that can fulfill that prophecy. That is a command. It's not a suggestion. Amen. Bill, we are out of time. We've got to get you back on a plane and you're out of here. You've done a great job uh, with, with this whole documentary and, and traveling around the world speaking on behalf of support of Israel. Against all odds, Israel survived from miraculous true stories. Thank you for your love for the Jewish Thank people. Thank you, Jonathan. Enjoy. Against All Odds, Israel Survives is an inspiring look at the role of faith, miracles, and divine intervention in the history of the nation of Israel since 1948. This 95-minute feature film includes moving eyewitness accounts, gripping dramatizations, and in-depth interviews with historians and religious leaders chronicling supernatural events which have time and again turned defeat into victory for the Israeli army and people. 
As you watch, you will be astounded and encouraged by historic and prophetic events which have contributed to the survival of this nation in the midst of enemies on every side. Against all odds, Israel Survives can be yours for a gift of $25 to help Jonathan Burness and Jewish Voice continue to take medical aid and the gospel to Jewish people suffering in poverty and sickness. Call now with your gift and ask for your own copy of this special DVD presentation. It doesn't take much to provide medical care, dental care, eye care, or a pair of glasses to one of these impoverished Jewish people. We have so much here in America and Europe, and they have so very little. They need your help. So please, I'm asking you to call, write, or visit our website now and give a gift to help us in our outreaches to the suffering Jews of Ethiopia, India, and other lost tribes of Israel that the Lord leads us to. As our thank you, I want to send you Bill McKay's powerful documentary, Against All Odds, Israel Survives, on DVD. So please, whatever the Lord is showing you to do, I'm asking you to be obedient and to call or visit our website now. You will be blessed in return for helping us touch the lives of precious, hurting Jewish people with the love and mercy of Jesus, Yeshua. Well, now let's continue my teaching series on confessing the Hebrew Scriptures. Well, we're looking once again today at a very important topic, a topic that if you'll be a doer of and you'll apply to your life, it's going to absolutely transform your relationship with the Lord. Friends, this is not a theory. This is reality. I've lived it. I've seen this at work. I've watched God transform people's lives. I've watched God heal people, deliver people, fill people, provide for people, all in direct connection to this important principle that I want to share with you today. I'm talking about confession of God's Word. I'm talking about building faith into your life. I'm talking about getting the words of the Bible off the pages and into here, into your heart where it belongs. Without faith, it's what? It's impossible to please God. I, for one, want to please God, and I know that you do too. But in order to please Him, we must have faith. That's what Hebrews 11:6 6 says. Look at the text with me. Without faith, it is impossible. Everybody say that with me. Impossible to please God. So, how do we get faith? So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. How do we hear the Word of God? Well, if you'll notice in that verse, hearing is mentioned twice. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. In other words, we confess the Word of God. We confess the Word of God. We confess the Scriptures. And as we confess those Scriptures, we're hearing the Word of God. We confess, we hear, we confess, we hear. And finally, after we confess it enough, after we hear it enough, it, we hear it with the ears of our heart, with the ears of our spirit. It drops from our mind into our heart where faith has to dwell. And then the next time we speak it forth, it becomes a reality. We confess, by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. By his stripes am I, I am healed. It drops into our heart finally. And then I speak against that sickness and I say, by the stripes of Messiah, you are healed. And suddenly it becomes a reality. Why? Because with the heart we believe, with the mouth confession is made unto. And so one of the ways that we build faith is by confessing the Word of God until it gets into our heart. I can't overstate the importance of this biblical principle. When God was preparing Joshua to take the children of Israel into the Promised Land after Moses died, he exhorted him in Joshua 1.8 by encouraging him to meditate on the law and not to let it depart from his lips. That word, uh, that Hebrew word meditate translated uh, is the Hebrew word haga, and it literally means to groan, it means to sigh, it means to mutter, it means to speak. And so God was saying to Joshua, confess the laws of God, bring, speak forth the words of God, don't let the laws of God, don't let what I've told you to speak forth, 
leave your lips because as you proclaim it, it will build faith and you need faith in order to lead the children of Israel. And we need faith today to fulfill the destiny that God has for our life. You need faith to fulfill the destiny that God has for your life. You know, the Christian concept of meditate has more to do with reflection. Uh, the word uh, meditation comes from the Latin word to consider or to contemplate. It's the process of deliberately focusing on, uh, on a specific scripture and reflecting on its meaning. But in the Hebrew, in the original Hebrew, there are two concepts or a dual concept of meditation. First, sicha, which has to do with rehearsing in one's mind or thoughts, like the Christian concept, but there is another word, haga which is not reflection with the mind, but with the mouth, to rehearse the Word of God in speech, to speak, to talk, to utter. Now let me focus on the Hebrew dimension to all this. The original language of the Old Testament is Hebrew. The various names of God which convey His identity, His revelation, His attributes, His very nature are in the Hebrew language. The promises of God, such as promises for healing and deliverance and, and divine provision, peace and salvation are all in the Hebrew. So it stands to reason that if we're going to experience the greatest impact, the greatest depth or the greatest fullness, we go back to the roots, back to Hebrew. And I've developed a material that it will enable you to actually confess the Hebrew scriptures without uh, study without uh, a lot of preparation, and, and I want to explain how to do this again. Last week, we looked at the word shalom, the Hebrew word shalom, which means peace, and I want to put it up here on the screen now and have you look at the Hebrew. Now, most of you can't read the Hebrew, shalom. Many of you may recognize it, but when we use this method called, that I introduced called transliteration, goes back to Reform Judaism, Jews that couldn't read the Hebrew text that had to read from the prayer book on the holidays uh, use this uh, method of transliteration so that they can read along with the response of Hebrew. And it becomes readable now, so you see the transliterated shalom, and you can read that shalom. Now let's actually look at the new workbook that I've put together on confessing the Hebrew scriptures. And this one, the first in my series, deal specifically with scriptures relating to Jehovah or Adonai Rapha, or Rapha, the God who is our healer, healing verses in the scriptures. So for example, look on the screen at uh, Psalm 107. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. You can see it in the Hebrew, uh, which you, most of you can't read. But now listen to the accompanying transliteration on the CD that I provide with this workbook that will actually help you to pronounce this scripture, to confess this scripture in the Hebrew language. Listen to the CD. Yishlach devaro v'yirpa'em v'imalet mishchitotam. Okay, so you can hear that th this is how it sounds when a sabra, when a native Israeli is actually reading the text. Now, you can repeat that by using the transliteration that's right below the Hebrew. Just one more to give you an example. Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And everyone together, by his stripes, we are healed. And you can see it now in the Hebrew. Very few of you can actually read it in the Hebrew. Now listen to our CD where a native Hebrew speaker is speaking this for you to learn. So you can see now, you can hear that with this accompanying CD, you follow along in the transliteration, you see it in the English, you confess it in the English, and then you read it in the transliterated English, and you learn how it's spoken in Hebrew so you can get the accents down very, very clearly. And that's the process for learning to confess the Hebrew scriptures in the original Hebrew. And off you go. No seminary training, no intensive Hebrew lesson. You just learn to read and confess using this transliteration method 
listening to the CD that we provide with it so you can hear how it sounds when it's spoken by a native Hebrew speaker and you're off confessing the Hebrew scriptures the same day you get the materials in the original language. It's that easy. Have you ever desired to pray and speak God's Word in its original Hebrew tongue? Now, Jonathan Burness and Jewish Voice bring you a powerful new resource, Confessing the Hebrew Scriptures, Workbook and CD. Call now, and with your gift of $40 or more, you will help bring medical aid and the gospel to Jewish people trapped in crushing poverty and sickness. And we'll send you Confessing the Hebrew Scriptures. Through a wonderfully simple technique, Jonathan Burness will teach you how to actually speak and pray the ancient scriptures without extensive language training. This breakthrough resource will help you confess scriptures on healing and spiritual wholeness in the original Hebrew. And as you use it in your daily prayer time, you will be building your own faith for healing and strength. Call now with your gift of $40 or more and may God bless you abundantly for bringing Yeshua to His people and sharing His love with those who need it desperately. I hope that you'll begin to apply this important discipline in your life and see how your faith grows. Confessing God's Word builds faith. My new workbook and audio CD will actually enable you to confess powerful scriptures on healing in the ancient Hebrew language that they were written in. This resource and the simple technique that I'm going to teach you will have you praying the Hebrew Scriptures aloud in just a few minutes' time. Now, I want to sow this into your life in appreciation for sowing into the lives of Jewish people in need. So call or you can go online now and find out how to get involved. And when you do, you'll be helping us to help bring medical care, dental care, eye care, glasses, free medicines, again, all completely free, to these hurting Jewish people. And most importantly, you'll help us to proclaim the good news of Yeshua to suffering Jewish communities. May the Lord bless you as you help us to bless the Jewish people, both in word and deed. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. So until next week, this is Jonathan Burnus reminding you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Bible says they shall prosper that love thee. Shalom and God bless you. Remember, you can receive the exciting DVD presentation of Against All Odds, Israel Survives for your gift of $25 or the teaching workbook and CD on The Power of Confessing Hebrew Scriptures for $40. Or you can receive both for your gift of $65 to help bring medical care and the gospel of Yeshua to Jewish people who are in such desperate need. Call today. It's time to proclaim Yeshua to the lost sheep of the House of Israel. Join us as a volunteer for our upcoming International Festival of Jewish Music and Dance in Rosario, Argentina, August 19th through the 29th. Come minister with us and see what the Lord can do through you. Call or email us today for complete details and get ready to bless others and be blessed in a big way. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you.